Welcome to AIN Debrief, where we take a deeper look at the most important or interesting aviation story of the past week with the AIN editor who covered it. I'm AIN News Editor Chad Trotvetter. This week, AIN Senior Editor Charles Alcock discusses the two large fleet orders announced in the past week from Directional Aviation's One Sky Flight slash Halo Aviation and Hellasol for EVE Urban Air Mobility eVTOLs. He also addresses whether these commitments legitimize the advanced air mobility market and what effect this might have on other startup OEMs hoping to break into this emerging segment. So Charlie, in the past week, EVE Urban Mobility uh, has racked up some, well, orders, uh, at least uh, commitments, I guess is probably a better word. Um, from Directional Aviation's Halo Division um, and also Hellasol. So um, the orders are for up to 200 from uh, Halo and 50 from Hellasol. So can you tell us about those? Yes, yeah, certainly. So these, uh, the I'm going to call the commitments, for want of a better word, have come within, within uh, five business days of each other. Um, and it is a pretty significant step forward for EVE Urban Air Mobility, which, as we'll discuss in a minute, is affiliated with Embraer. Uh, Keep in mind that unlike a lot of the other EVATOL aircraft manufacturers, EVE has been very, very quiet. We know that they've been working on an aircraft for the best part of two years at least, but they have said very little about it. And now suddenly within the space of the week, they're saying we've got two launch customers essentially, uh, one Sky Flight, uh, which, um, as you said, is owned by Directional Aviation, and now a Brazilian helicopter operator called Helisol Aviation. Uh, now, are they firm orders? The, 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 the announcements kind of loosely refer to them as orders. In the mainstream world of, of air transport and airliners, an order means something very specific. It usually means that uh, you know a deposit has been put down, that there's a legally binding contract. And I have a feeling that in both of these cases, the agreements are a little bit looser than that, because after all, this is an aircraft that, you know, hasn't yet come to market. Does that say, does this signal that maybe something's happening at EVE? Uh, Maybe they have, uh, perhaps we'll see a rollout of something or or more information about test flying um, and certification? Yes, I I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think think there could be more to come from EVE, both in terms of them actually showing a prototype of the aircraft, which they haven't yet shown to us. You'll see in both announcements, it says that the aircraft should start being delivered to these two operators in 2026. Well, given the timeline of how these EVATOL aircraft developments are going, the aircraft that are supposed to enter service in 2024 are now out in the open. They've been shown, they've been unveiled. In in, uh, some cases, they've flown prototypes. So I would say to meet that 2026 timeline, you know, within about the next year or so, Eve would have to have something to show for it, they, or at least they'd have to provide some proof that they really were on track to get that type certified. Uh, but then on the, the other aspect of this that I think uh, we've both noticed is, although these announcements came, uh, came across to us on, on uh, you know, headed note paper that had Embraer at the top, it's a little ambiguous exactly what the relationship is between Eve and Urban Air Mobility, and the main Brazilian company, Embraer. Um, So we could possibly see some news on that score. Maybe there's going to be some sort of corporate restructuring. Um, Just to be clear, EVE Urban Air Mobility came out of, they call it graduated, it basically was separated out of a thing called Embraer X, which, uh, for want of a better phrase, is a technology incubator division within Embraer where they, you know, they develop advanced technologies and then decide to spin them off or, or cancel them or whatever it may be. So, you know, it, it, it would seem that EVE Urban Air Mobility isn't a regular mainstream subsidiary of Embraer. Quite how the ownership and management of it plays out uh, remains to be seen. Yeah, is it Brazil based or is it US based? I see a lot of things referring to it as Fort Lauderdale based, but I don't know. Yeah, Melbourne. Actually, Melbourne, Florida, I think, is the main hub of of where Eve is uh, is doing its activity. However, when I've interviewed 
people at the company there. They've said that they've got engineers down in Brazil working on some aspects of what they do. Um, they also have an offshoot over in Silicon Valley in California. So I think EVE Urban Air Mobility is sort of a catch-all for all the uh, different Embraer Group activity in this direction, and it comes under that EVE name. But that's part of what I'm referring to. You know, in the As this program develops, um, it could be that they restructure that in some way. And what do we know about Eve? You know, how many passengers? Uh, how many rotors? Do we have any idea of what it looks like or what it will look like? Yes, certainly. It's it's uh, we've seen pictures. It's it's basically what is referred to as a lift and cruise Evertol. Um, so if, if you look at the the cabin, it looks a little bit like a helicopter cabin, and it will seat a pilot and four passengers, up to four passengers. It has kind of uh, a two-section wing, I suppose, for want of a better word. There are two parts to the wing, and the wings are co-joined by what I call booms. And on each of those are, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, uh, sorry, eight sets of, of vertical lift rotors, and then two what looked like ducted fans at the rear that act like uh, pushes to, to to push the aircraft forward during cruise flight. But I would stress this is just an early concept image that we've seen. And that's the point I was trying to make earlier. Until we see an actual real prototype, we won't know for sure exactly what this looks like. So th- this is probably the, the largest. I know United uh, placed the commitment for 150 uh, archers. But I think this this kind of puts uh, Eve in the in the front you know at the front of the line here as far as order well commitments I guess yes it does um, yes yeah so um, does this legitimize the air, advanced air mobility uh, segment uh, that's emerging yes in my opinion it does in my opinion it does and what's what I think is really significant about these two orders is that this makes it clear as far as I can see, that EVE's intention is to design, certify, and make these aircraft and then sell them to frontline operators in much the same way that its Embraer parent company makes business jets and sells them to business jet operators and makes regional airliners and sells them to regional airlines. And you might say, well, isn't that absolutely obvious that that's what an aircraft manufacturer would do? Well, no, it isn't in the Evitol world because quite a few companies, including Archer, their core business model is to make and themselves operate those aircraft in, in you know, uh, advanced air taxi networks, for want of a better phrase. And the deal that Archer has with, with um, United Airlines is it's very significant indeed, but it is only part of what Archer's business model is, whereas uh, Eve seems to have a, a more traditional business model that involves it selling aircraft to other people who are going to operate them. So what does this mean for other hopeful OEMs? Um, you know, even established players such as Airbus, uh, you know, they don't, Airbus has not announced any orders uh, for their, uh, it's the city Airbus, right? Uh, well, developing. yes, exactly. Yeah. So, and the re- yeah, the re- well, the reason Airbus, just let's just clear up that point quickly. The reason Airbus hasn't announced any orders is because it doesn't yet have a confirmed Evertol project. So you refer to city Airbus. That is a technology demonstrator. So at the moment, it's just a concept. It's a, we might be able to do something like this, but we're not totally sure we are going to do something like this. And what remains to be seen is whether Airbus and, and potentially others, including Boeing, come out and say, yep, we're definitely producing an Evertol and here's what it will look like. And I personally believe that Airbus and other big aerospace companies like that are probably working on some of this stuff in stealth mode and and they 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 don't feel the need to go out there and grab all the attention they they let the startups like archer and and joby and volocopter and lilium get all the attention because they're chasing down money and investors um but i do think this is very significant uh the order the orders we're discussing now if only because it establishes a clear connection between the new generation evatol aircraft developers and what you and I, Chad, would call sort of mainstream business aviation, because the people they're doing these deals with are, are basically business aviation operators. They're the people who are already providing private aviation services. And for the longest time that I've been following the Evertel sector, I've been thinking, 
why on earth, as a manufacturer, wouldn't you try and establish a relationship with people who are basically already providing these services, albeit with traditional jets and, and helicopters? Right. So what does it mean for the other OEMs? You, you mentioned, uh, I think, three or four. Um, yes. And then also Embraer and Airbus. Is there any room for anybody else past that, really? Uh, yes, uh, with quite a big asterisk. There's probably room for, at best, about half a dozen what I would call mainstream EVATOL uh, developers. In other words, people making EVATOL aircraft primarily for passenger services. I reckon there's probably room for half a dozen of those. But there's a lot more to advanced air mobility than just that. So I think we will also see companies succeed who are producing e-stall aircraft, you know, electric short takeoff and landing aircraft that might be used for, you know, cargo distribution, that sort of thing. Uh, We might see smaller EVATOL aircraft used for cargo or logistics or emergency medical applications where they're not looking to get into this sector where they're going to be selling hundreds of these things for taxi services. Um, I do think what we're seeing overall is the leaders in this sector breaking away from the pack and getting far clearer ahead and having a far more defined path to market as exemplified by these orders. So, you know, 12 months ago, when we were sitting around talking about this sector, I was telling you, oh, boy, there are 200 of these companies trying to do this. Well, you can forget about that. There are, you, those companies may still exist in one shape or form, but in reality, it's the front of the pack that we need to focus our attention on. And the front of the pack is now reaching the point where it's, it's uh, racking up firm commitments like this. So, uh, you know, with these orders coming in, um, we're going to see a consolidation of this industry. Um, is it going to happen quickly? You know, is there going to be a, a collapse of these companies, you know, the French companies? Um, or is it going to be kind of a slower where they try to merge with each other and, and still try to edge into the top tier there? Yeah, I think good point. I think it will be a bit of all of that. So what we're going to see in the next three years, so essentially between now and 2024, are the front runners who are in this sort of dash to get in, get aircraft into initial operations because they have to start generating revenues because they've got uh, financial backers who've basically been told, oh, we're going to get these things into service really quickly. You'll start getting a return on your, your investment. So we'll see that. But then at the same time, there are some other companies who are saying, you know what, we can take a bit longer than that. We don't don't have to be the first to the market. We feel that our product and our business model is more viable. And you could say that EVE is in that category. It's saying that they're not planning to deliver anything until 2026, so maybe a good two years after the other ones. I think a lot of these companies, you know, there aren't going to be sort of dramatic public Uh, bankruptcies. I think I would describe it as kind of withering on the vine. These companies will just sort of quietly go away. In some cases, their owners, and it's usually, they're usually quite small private companies, will maybe sell their intellectual property to somebody else, sell some aspect of what they're doing to somebody else. Um, We've seen quite a few Evitol companies essentially go out headhunting and sort of talent spot the best engineering talent in these other companies. Um, so I, I think over several years, we'll, we'll see an evolution rather than some sort of big bang where suddenly overnight 150 companies go out of business. So let's circle back to, uh, directional, the one, their one sky flight division, yes. um, which is, uh, I guess doing business as halo, uh, now, I guess, uh, that's the UK, that was a UK helicopter operator, but they also have a, uh, a New York city based uh, helicopter operator as well, like New York City area, I guess. Um, and, and I guess that's where the majority of their EV tolls will go. Is that correct? Well, yeah, they're implying that. Again, I, actually, when this news broke last week about uh, Halo, I sent I sent the company a, quite a long list of very specific companies about exactly how and where these services would begin. I haven't yet had a response, but they're characterizing this in terms of the initial fleet will be split between the U.S. and the U.K., if you look at the marketing photos, the, the, the backdrops that we're seeing are very specifically New York City uh, and London. And so they haven't yet explicitly said, but they're kind of implying that those are going to be the main focal points. Um, but I don't think all 100 aircraft will each go into New York and, and London. I think they may be more dispersed than that. They just perhaps haven't defined the plan uh, for that to happen. 
And certainly on the U.S. side, they have Halo. Uh, sorry, uh, Directional Aviation has a partnership or has a subsidiary, rather called Associated Aircraft Group, which is established across the U.S. So they could start operating potentially in other cities like Miami, Los Angeles, Dallas, all of which have expressed an interest in the Evatol aircraft. And in theory, Halo Aviation in the U.K. could operate in in other European cities. There would be. Uh, uh, you know, a slight com- more than a slight complication in that because of Brexit, they'd have to have an air operator certificate in another in a, an EU state. Uh, but you know, th- but that could happen. That's not out of the question. Um, is there any concern about? I know some of these uh, New York, London uh, have potential for icing in the winter. Is there any concern about that? Yes, that that question has been raised, and most of the Evatol um, aircraft developers that I've spoken to uh, so far, and I should stress I haven't explicitly asked Eve this question, have said that as things stand, they are not planning for their aircraft to fly to fly into known icing conditions. You know, meaning they don't have a plan for if it's definitely an icy day, they would they would de ice them and and you know be able to go off and fly. So that will be a limiting factor. Uh, definitely in New York, where, of course, they have very harsh winters, to some extent in London, too. Um, it could be that EVE has a plan for that. I mean, just to be clear, uh, Embraer, the company behind EVE, makes business jets, makes regional airliners, all of which are perfectly capable of operating in icing conditions. So, you know, it's not that it can't be done. It's just a question of whether you engineer a plan for that to be done from the start. Right. All right. Anything else we missed, Charlie, on, on this order? No, I, I think that's about it. But, the, the, yeah, I don't want to dampen the, the excitement over this. It is very significant. But as usual, I'm I'm uh, hungry and impatient to get more details on it. <laughs> Aren't we all? Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. Thanks for listening to AI and Debrief. Another podcast episode will air next Friday. In the meantime, go to www.aionline.com for the latest aviation news from AIN. <laughs>